Palmetto, we have a Cornillo en route. It was a Thursday. A patient rushed to Palmetto General Hospital, bleeding uncontrollably from wounds in the torso. The patient whisked through the ER doors at 3.39 p.m. EMT Christian Martinez was on the scene. I see the stretcher and the patient covered in blood. There was blood all over. Stay with us, okay? The emergency triage team immediately activated. As soon as I saw the patient, I said, whoever is going to get this patient is going to need help. RN Yamili Yoren said this technically wasn't her patient, but she jumped in because it's all about teamwork. How are you doing? The patient was in shock, hypotensive, the blood pressure severely low. Respiratory was immediately called and the patient intubated within minutes. We're going to keep your family informed, don't worry, okay? IV bags put in place, labs drawn, EKG, a central line put in place. Emergency room physician Dr. Eric Carrasco making life-saving choices for this very critical patient. We start blood transfusion immediately. The patient's hemoglobin was 2.6, so low. It's almost incompatible with life. In all, the patient received nine blood transfusions, replacing about 50% of the patient's body. The patient was stabilized and then sent for a CAT scan. Let's do a CAT scan. Also with the CAT scan, surgeon Noria Lawson. Her assessment? This is not going to be amenable for surgical intervention. I said, we now have to find the interventional radiologist. Dr. Lawson immediately contacted interventional radiologist Dr. Elan Raoli. The patient was taken out of the CAT scan at 4.45. All of this done just 66 minutes after arriving. I saw that the patient had a massive bleed into the subcutaneous tissues of the back, and I realized this was an emergency case right away. Dr. Aioli called nurse manager of IR Nadine Hassan. She activated the IR team. Hi, Karen. I have an emergency. She called director of surgical okay. services in IR Karen Weaver at 5.30. Okay. Let me get everyone together. I'll be right down. Karen immediately began making sure the hybrid OR was ready. I called Dr. Garcia for anesthesia as he was about to start a heart to say we had a critical patient. He then activated two CRNAs and himself. We brought all the supplies down. Everyone came into the OR, got everything open, set up the back table, set everything up to ready to receive the patient. 11 minutes from the call to Weaver at 541, we gotta go. the patient was wheeled into the hybrid OR by a respiratory therapist, Hassan and Dr. Raoli themselves and we needed to stop the bleed as soon as possible or the patient could die. The patient on the table. 19 minutes after the team entered the hybrid OR, the wire was placed. It was 6 p.m. Okay, let me have some contrast to do a run. We did an angiogram, that's where we inject contrast dye to evaluate the vessels. They found the source of the problem. We found the actual bleeding, which was the right L3 lumbar artery. So these coils. This is the bleed right here. Dr. Aioli placed a very small coil into the artery. You see that right here. We pulled them back until the whole vessel was uh, infused with them. We did a contrast injection. We saw no further bleeding. Okay, I think we've got it. The procedure complete at 621. From inserting the wire at six to the completion time, a mere 21 minutes. That's it, it's done. Thank you very much for your help. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. You'll recall the patient entered the ER at 3.39 p.m. with an extremely complicated case. The tear was diagnosed and fixed by 6.21, a life saved in a total of two hours and 42 minutes. This is a perfect example of the synergy of all um, disciplines in the hospital working together. The patient was kept in the hybrid OR until the patient was stable and warm enough for transport. The patient was taken to ICU an hour and 39 minutes later at 8 p.m. All right, get a set of vitals. The staff overseeing the patient's crucial moments checked on the patient in ICU. The patient was awake and then blew us a kiss to say um, thank you to us. We made sure that the patient's family was informed of the status, what we were doing, what to expect. ICU critical care director Vicki Perez says the patient was extubated Friday, just 24 hours after arriving, and monitored on Saturday in the ICU. On Sunday, we were able to take the patient to the regular floor the patient was very grateful with the staff. And on Tuesday, a mere four days after the patient was rolled through those emergency room doors, moments away from death, the patient was discharged. A life saved, thanks to perfectly timed teamwork. Also thanks to a commitment to excellence, outstanding technology, experience, and above all, 
a better life for patients treated at Palmetto General Hospital.